Welcome to the video on how to test Flex applications compiled with the Flex Client Library. Test Complete allows you to create functional tests for a great number of different application types. For instance, you can create tests for Windows, .NET, Java, and other applications. Along with these applications, you can also create tests for Adobe Flex applications working in Internet Explorer or Firefox browsers. With Test Complete, you can easily simulate user actions on Flex and Flash movies and even access their internal objects, methods, and properties. There are several approaches to make these objects accessible to Test Complete. Each of them has their own unique advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you decide to use the runtime loader, you'll need to copy some special files to the web server that's hosting the Flex application. If you choose to use the Flash Injector, you'll have to use a special version of the Adobe Flash Player. In this video, I'm going to show you the specifics of using the Flex Client Library to make your Flex and Flash applications testable. The Flex Client Library is shipped along with Test Complete. It's used to expose the internal objects, methods, and properties of Flex applications to the Test Complete engine. You compile your Flex modules with this library included, and then the test engine gains access to the application's internals. This approach provides the best possible identification of the application's internal objects and guarantees access to all the internal methods and properties. However, the library code does increase the size of the resulting Swift module. One more limitation is that this approach only supports applications created with ActionScript 3.0 or later. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to include the Flex Client Library in a Flex application to make it testable, and then we'll record and replay a test against that application. And in my explanation, I'm going to use a sample Flex application that's located on my computer. There are several ways to include the Flex Builder Library in a Flex application. Using Flash Builder or Flex Builder IDE, uh, using the Flex Compiler's command line interface, or using the Flex Compiler's configuration file. I'm going to show you how to include the library using the Flash Builder IDE. To compile your Flex application with the Flex Client Library, you don't have to change the application's source code, you just need to specify certain compiler options. Okay, I've already opened my application's project in Flash Builder, and now I'm going to show you the properties that you need to set. So we're going to go up here to Project Properties, and we're going to click on the Flex Compiler section here, and what you want to do is add this line right here to the additional compiler arguments. You want to put in this include library statement and then the path to the flex client SWIC file. And that's going to be located in the open apps slash flex directory of your test complete install folder. Testing flex applications with test complete also requires a wrapper page. So you can create wrapper pages manually or if you're using Flash Builder you can have it automatically generate this HTML wrapper for you. To do this, just check that box right there. Once that's done, come on up here to Project, Build Project, and that will compile the application. Okay, so we've compiled our application with the Flex Client Library, and now let's ensure that Test Complete has access to the Flex application's internals. So I've already loaded up the web page that contains the Flex application here in IE, and I'm going to jump into Test Complete, and I'm going to flip over to the Object Browser tab. Okay, so here's my instance of Internet Explorer. Here's the web page that has my Flex application running in it. And here I've expanded these nodes. You can see these are the internal objects of the Flex application. Anything that has this glyph next to it is one that is a recognized Flex object. Now when you select an individual Flex object, over here on the right you can see all the properties associated with that Flex object. And this property right here, this Flex object property, if you click that, that gives you access to all the internal properties and methods of the selected Flex object. So we have successfully compiled our application for use with Test Complete. So we've demonstrated how you can explore a Flex application in the object browser, and now let's learn how to create a Test Complete project, define a tested Flex application, and record a test against that app. So to start out, we're going to create a new project just by clicking on this Create New Project button. That brings up the Create New Project Wizard, and I'll call this the Flex Client Demo. Okay, we'll say Next. Now we want to specify what kind of application we're going to be testing. In this case, because we're doing a Flex-based app, we're going to say Web. Now Test Complete offers a couple of different ways you can do web testing, but because we're testing an actual Flex element on a web page, we're going to choose Functional Testing of Web Pages. Now I'm going to click Add in order to add the web page that I want to test to the project that we're creating. And what I'm going to do is just copy the URL to that page 
right from this address bar in my browser and we'll just put that right inside here there we go I can also specify what browser I'm going to do my testing with in this case I'm going to stick with the 32-bit version of IE and I can give my tested web pages a more descriptive name I'm going to call this my flex app instead of page one one more thing to note here is this auto run checkbox. This means that when we start the recording process, Test Complete will automatically invoke the specified browser and take us out to our Flex application. So I'm going to say next. I'm going to keep the default visualizer settings, and I'm going to use JScript as my language of choice here. Okay, so now our project has been created, and you can see our Flex website has been added to our list of tested applications. Okay, so now we're ready to record a test against our application, so I'm going to click the Record New Test button here on the toolbar. Test Complete's going to minimize down to just this recording toolbar. You can see it's automatically invoked my browser and taken me out to my target URL. And now let's go ahead and perform some actions against our app. Let's choose to edit John Smith's order here. So we're going to click John Smith, we'll click Edit Order, and let's say that John Smith actually wanted the Family Album product and he really wanted 50 of those. Now you'll notice that when I change my quantity to 50, this discount field automatically populates with a value of 15%. And we want to verify that value uh, in our test. So to do that, we're going to create a property checkpoint, because that text is just a property of a particular object on screen. So what we want to do is drag this finder tool over the object in question. You can see that Test Complete draws a red box around the object when it's selected. So once it's selected, I'll release the mouse. Test Complete fetches back a reference to that object. I'm going to click Next. And now I want to verify the actual text of that control. So I'm going to click the Advanced View button here. And I'm going to scroll down to the Flex Object property. I'm going to click the ellipses here. And now what I'm looking for is the actual text of the control. Now, because there are a lot of properties here, I'm going to narrow things down a bit by typing the word text into this field. There's our text property. I'm going to select that. Click Next. Here's the summary of what our checkpoint is going to do. We'll look at that flex object's text property and make sure it equals 15%. So now I'll say Finish. I'll click OK. Close the browser down. And stop recording. Okay, now Test Complete has taken a moment and it's processed all those actions as a keyword test. And as you can see, Test Complete has successfully recognized all the individual elements inside our application. All right, so now we're going to run the recorded test to make sure that it's played back properly. So I'm just going to click this Run Test button. And then Test Complete's going to fire off and replay that same sequence of actions that we just recorded. Okay, I fast forwarded a bit and you can see the test has finished and Test Complete is now displaying its results here in this log panel. And this panel provides us with detailed information about the actions that the test simulated. For example, this first message indicates that Test Complete invoked our browser and took us out to the target web page. Uh, this message right here shows us the test performing actions against a combo box. You can also view images of what the application looked like both at record time and at playback time. These images help you understand what your test did and it allows you to easily see whether or not there were any differences between your application's actual and expected state and behavior. This log items panel right here tells us whether or not the test passed or failed and we know this one passed because of the green check mark here. And this information palette displays additional info about how many errors or warnings were encountered during the course of the run. In this case, we can see there were zero errors and zero warnings. So we've described how to make Flex applications testable by compiling them with the Flex client library. To learn about other approaches that Test Complete offers for testing Adobe Flex applications, please check out the rest of our video library on our website, smartbear.com. We wish you luck and hope you enjoy automating your tests with Test Complete.